Welcome to Hillary Topper On Air, the podcast you can't afford to miss. New York City is a treasure trove of street art. From professional murals to graffiti, there is something for everyone to enjoy. When you talk about street art in New York, the notorious Tats crew most certainly comes to mind. I'm Hillary Topper, and this is Hillary Topper On Air. Today, I am so excited to be speaking with Jeff Jaffe, owner and founder of Pop International Galleries and the renowned pop artist, Fernando Romero. Welcome, guys, to the show. Hello. Hey. Lovely to be here. Really excited. Yeah, thank you for having us. So, Jeff, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and Pop International Galleries in New York City. Um, well, where does one begin, really? <laughs> uh, Pop is into its uh, 24th year here in Manhattan. Um, I uh, came to the United States from South Africa a very, 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 very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after having finished my own graduate studies in sculpture and whatnot, um, I found myself in the art world. And um, so the Pop Gallery started off as really the, the preeminent gallery for art that was essentially pop art, Andy Warhol and Keith Haring and all those people, mm -hmm. and art that was derived from popular culture, which leads us beautifully into, it's the perfect segue um, into the world of street art and graffiti, and um, hence my relationship with Fernando Ski, as we call him and know him, mm -hmm. who is a uh, renowned street boy himself who has done some incredible work over the years and is a, a great friend and uh, part of the pop gallery. And Fernando, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your art? Um, well, hello everyone. My name is Fernando. I go by Ski. <clears throat> uh, born and raised New Yorker. Um, you know, grew up just like every kid, uh, you know, every kid in an urban environment. Uh, looking at the walls and uh, trying to create my own identity through typography and abstract design, etc. So I grew up in that era of the 90s. Um, <clears throat> you know, fast forward, I you know I was on I was in the streets of Soho selling my art on a table for many many years, um, and that's you know right shortly after that is um, <clears throat> where you know Jeff and I met, and. Um, we just cultivated a really good relationship. We, we created something really nice here at the gallery. You know, he helped me grow as an artist. And, um, you know, fast forward to where we are today, you know, given the opportunity to, you know, to work together and put something really, really nice, iconic, memorable, and, you know, just life-changing and educational, you know, kind of wrapping all that into one. So the two of you have joined forces, and now you have a New York City one-of-a-kind art exhibit called Here and Now, a Tats Crew Retrospective. Can you tell us a little bit about the show? Absolutely. Um, I'm going to say roughly five years ago, um, I had the privilege of being invited to go up to the Bronx and visit uh, what we call the compound where Tats Crew um, has their workspace and studios and business offices. Um, they also have a, a small educational center, which uh, does just phenomenal work um, in the community. And they have a reproduction of a, of a New York subway car, which gets painted up every now and then. So it was quite, a, quite an experience. Um, at that time, it was just a, a sort of a complicated time for various reasons. And um, when Fernando came to me uh, just not terribly long ago to say, hey, want to do something with Tat's crew? I said, is the Pope Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> and I, said, <laughs> I think those were his exact words. <laughs> And I said, yeah, let's have a meeting and uh, let's plan it because they had never, ever been in New York City, a comprehensive showing of the collection of this group of artists uh, ever. And while they've been shown in galleries here and there and done major walls and all that stuff, um, they had never really 
had something put together the way Fernando curated this for us, and um, I am beyond thrilled and excited. So this is really cool, and I'm psyched about this too. Can you tell us, our listeners, what they can expect when they, when they come and visit the exhibit at POP International Galleries? Yes, the exhibit is at POP. Um, it opens up this Thursday. And um, what you can expect to see is a lot of energy, a lot of color, a lot of growth. I mean, you know, the, the artists that, are, that we'll be showing here are, you know, Days and Crash, uh, Bio, BG, Nicer, Eric Orr, and Nick Walker. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a really nice, diverse um, body of work, a lot of color. Um, a lot, you know, a lot of them have messages, so there's like, you know, there's meaning behind the work, and there's, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of great stuff here, a lot of great stuff. I'm here looking at the walls, and I'm just kind of just taken back. I almost get sidetracked a little bit because I'm so drawn in. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, I mean, I was looking at the website, and it looks amazing. So yeah. which, which is your, do you have a favorite piece in this collection, and why is it your favorite piece? I'd love to hear from both uh, of you. I, I have to say that um, sort of discovering more and more about the history of this group and the guys that have sort of sustained it and been together and worked together, Bio sort of being the guy who started the whole thing to begin with, um, is he just blows me away. Um, the work is just beautiful. We've pre-sold some pieces already, which is just astonishing. Um, his style has become refined in ways that is just, um, to me, um, so beautifully, as I say, refined and worked, and, but it, it pays homage to where he comes from. He doesn't miss anything. Um, so from that perspective, um, he's the one artist that sort of really draws me in. However, there is one piece of art that is on a piece of aluminum, which looks to be the part of a, of a train, um, which is a combination work between, um, between Days, Days and Bio. And, bio. and mm. it is my favorite piece in the show by far. And it's Sky, what about you? Um, you know, I, I kind of, it's Ski. ski. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have to agree with, um, with Jeff. Um, you know, Bio has the most um just the most attention um there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of complexity there's a lot of different techniques that are used in it um but also like when i look at nicer's work um you know he's a painter and you know i know the guys for for many years and you know you 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 know certain things about them but then you don't know other things about them so mm -hmm. this show has really uh, not only brought us closer as friends but also brought me into their world, seeing, you know, how they work and their technique. And, you know, when you come to the gallery, you will see that. <clears throat> and when you meet the guys, you will understand why they are here, you know, why they have four decades of legacy. You know, they've been friends since the beginning, and they're still friends today. And to me, that's one of the most amazing things is having that timeline and story to tell. I mean, there's a lot of New York City crews that, that you know, that were around before them, but they haven't been around till now in the same magnitude that, they, that they're in. So their contribution, you know, to graffiti, the culture, the arts, um, is just beyond words. And what's astonishing to me is how beautifully Ski has actually sort of curated this collection, pulling pieces together that um, reflect this group in a way that is so classically clear, depicting who they are, representing who they are, showing us what four decades at least of friendship and hard work and perseverance and commitment to the community in which they live, all of this. I mean, it's truly, truly one of the most astonishing shows we've had at Pop International Galleries. Yeah. So cool. It goes, um, it, goes, it goes beyond, you know, the art. You know, it touches on human. It touches on stories and family and friendship. And, you know, you'll, you'll feel that once you, um, once, you, once you experience it. 
Absolutely. So tell us what the dates are of the show and where the show is located. So the show opens this Thursday, uh, the 12th of December, at Pop International Galleries at 195 Bowery, which is uh, uh, also quite remarkable because they had just done, Tat's crew had just completed the Bowery Wall, which is a very, very famous wall on the Bowery and Houston Street. Um, and so everything sort of fell into place really at the, same, at, the, at the most perfect time. Keith Haring was the first person to work on that wall, and so it gets cool. uh, circulated amongst the artists, and just recently Tats crew did that wall just a few blocks up from the gallery. Anyway, I digress. The show, <laughs> the show is at Pop International at 195 Bowery uh, on the 12th of December from 7 to 9, RSVP required. Uh, we will be shutting down the list pretty soon because we are at – pretty much a capacity, uh, well over 300 people have RSVP'd, which is just really, really wonderful. So if and you how long is it going? The, until? If you can't find the gallery, just look for the long line outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it, yeah, it's scheduled for the month of December. Uh, okay. I, I have a, a feeling that it's going to sell extremely well, and as long as it's selling, We'll be having um, art by Tat's crew hanging up on the wall. So that's the awesome. way we see it over here. Awesome. All right, so let's switch gears for a bit. And I know, Jeff, you've been representing Sky for almost a decade. Ski. Ski. Why do I keep saying Sky? I'm sorry. Well, because Ski. <laughs> It's all right. Because I it's one of thinking... those things that, that unless you're on a, on a mountain with a pair of skis, you're not going to look at <laughs> Ski. So I totally understand. And it's my fault for choosing ski because ski was um, – so if you look back at, you know, the history of graffiti, like ski was never used as a tag per se. It was always mm -hmm. used at the ending to, like, accentuate something. So, like, starts – star ski, up ski, this, that. So it was never used as something on its own until I came along. So I totally understand. <laughs> so, all right. So... Leave it to me to shake things up, right? <laughs> So, Jeff, you've been representing Ski for almost a decade now. What drew you to him to begin with and his art? Oh, my God. This is a story that I, every time I tell it, my eyes well up with tears and I get goosebumps. And as I'm talking about it now, you can see my eyes yeah. welling up with tears. I'm watching him. I'm watching him. Um, <laughs> so, a number of years ago, I... I'll tell the story from the beginning. Yeah. Um, a number of years ago, I got a phone call from a collector of the gallery, a really lovely guy who'd been buying a bunch of stuff from us. And he said, he said, Jeff, I'd like you to go to Bushwick and visit these two guys. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, Mike, if you think I should go and visit, I trust you well enough, and I will go and see them. Now, Bushwick is a complicated place at the best of times. I can tell you nine or ten years ago, it isn't what it is. To, it, was, it isn't what it is today. Yeah. It wasn't what it is today. <laughs> anyway, so I sort of went up there. I ventured up out to Bushwick and found the boys, Ski and 2 Isay, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, um, Fernando and Mike, Fernando Romero and Mike Bucker, who had formed a... Um, cooperative sort of small group of themselves painting together called, and they, could, they went by the moniker of you are New York letter U mm -hmm. letter R New York anyway I walked into this space and quickly sort of glanced around and knew immediately that uh, this was wonderful artwork and it was going to be at the pop gallery um, and then I noticed on the one on the table on the one side there was some coffee and donuts for me and on the other side I still think it was Hennessy it, it was a bottle of Hennessy <laughs> <laughs> they didn't they didn't what a kind you know what, what, a, what a pairing <laughs> they didn't know who and what to expect um, anyway so of course I took the uh, coffee and donuts <laughs> and mind I, you it was probably around noon <laughs> so you know cognac in the morning was probably not the best uh, <laughs> anyway, so I was wandering around the space and knew 
sort of really that um, this artwork was going to be a, become a major feature of pop. Remember, these are guys who had been tagging buildings and trains and walls and mm -hmm. doing all kinds of things. Um, they were selling their art in the street in Soho on, on Prince Street and, and wherever, and not far from the gallery now, for 50 bucks or 100 bucks. And um, it was a whole other time and space. And so I made that decision that um, Fernando and Mike would become part of the gallery. So as we're talking, um, I said to them, okay, guys, um, we, you're in, um, but there are a couple of things that we have to take care of first. And they said, sure, sure, sure. You know, what, what is it? Like, whatever you need. Um, and I said, well, okay. So the, I think it was 37 indictments that are you have against you. and the, yeah, uh, <laughs> my, yeah. And the yeah, there were some legal issues. And uh, the probation graffiti. that you're on for the next five years and all that stuff. We're going to have to sort of get rid of that by doing certain things. I'm going to write letters. Um, my attorney is a former judge. Uh, she will write letters. We're going to do all kinds of things. Um, and on condition that you can tell me that you're going to be willing to sort of contribute and get back, give back to the community in a certain way, you're, you're, you're going to become part of the pop family. And they sort of jumped up and down and jumped <laughs> like a plan. I think we picked you up. I think, I think you did pick me up. <laughs> and then they put me down and said, how do you know that? I said, how do you know all this stuff? And I said, well, Mike told me, you know, the guy who referred me to them. And um, like, How the heck does he? <laughs> and then said, how does Mike know that? And then I kind of had to make a decision as to whether I could actually out Mike at the time. And you know what I said? Screw it. I said, okay, you guys, if you don't know, Mike is the undercover cop that <laughs> arrested one of you a few times. And began to collect your artwork, but never told you what he did, uh, because he was undercover and it was always the uniform guys that would bring people in, um, and developed a relationship with you without telling you really what he did, and um, began to collect art from you. Isn't that sneaky? <laughs> That's so sneaky. <laughs> well, you know, he was undercover. Like, he couldn't break his cover. So um, we all jumped up and down, and, of course, the other Mike goes, I knew he was a cop. <laughs> his haircut. He looked like Dick Tracy. <laughs> it was hilarious. Anyway, that's the start of uh, our relationship, and i got to tell you that these boys, Mike and Fernando, um, are part of what we do at Pop at the Pop Gallery. They're like sons to me in many ways. Uh, my relationship um, with them uh, is just astonishing. That's and, so cool. Uh, it's a great it's a story. Yeah. Great just, story. So everything sort of led into things. So our relationship and sort of their career growing and developing, and then sort of ultimately five years after I actually had visited Tat's crew up in the Bronx, um, Ski brings them to me again and says, you know what, what about it? Yep. So Full circle. Ski, Full circle. we have like a couple of minutes left. Can you just, I know this is like a long-winded question, but where did you originally get your inspiration as an artist? Um, New York, yeah. growing up. Yeah. The mecca of graffiti, the mecca of everything um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to to be growing to grow up in the 90s when I mean that was to me just the biggest boom the, you know in time and uh, that that influenced me heavily my cousin was the first person who I ever saw write graffiti I was walking <laughs> with my aunt uh, down Steinway Street mm -hmm. and we were under a trestle and it was really dark and there were three kids and they were tagging the wall and my aunt yells out Jose is that you <laughs> and he, he, he just walked away. Like, he didn't even look at us. He just walked away, and I was like, wow, there's something about this that's so cool. Like, you're the man behind the hoodie. So that's probably what sparked it. Um, and I was very fortunate enough to know a lot of, uh, like, very prominent graffiti writers as a young age. Um, like, you know, Tats Crew, I mean, they influenced mm -hmm. me greatly. You know, all, all, what I remember is looking through magazines because we didn't have the Internet. 
so you would have to order videos or you know get a magazine and you know they were the first crew that I remember copying their letters because I didn't know how to do like a proper K so I would copy bios the stick of his B a little bit of the I and then I'll t you know so I would kind of create my own letters based on like you know their typography and um, yeah then it just kind of spiraled into something else. I didn't know I would be an artist. I, I thought I'd be an engineer or an architect. That's like <laughs> awesome. where my head really was yeah. in, in high school and college. But afterwards, you know, you, you learn things and you you see where you belong. And, and I'm like, you know what? I'm at home with art and I'm at the right place at POP. And uh, Love it. I'm just with the right people. So, Love it. So, so yeah. lastly, how do people get in touch with you and learn more about Here and Now, also Ski's artwork and Pop International Gallery? I know that's a lot, but, you know, if you could just well, give me that information. very simple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the so what we call social media? Um, <laughs> We have a beautiful website, www.popinternational.com, and uh, all of the information, both about Tet's crew and Ski and You Are New York and all of that is beautifully represented on the website. Our, um, um, we have a, a tag for uh, all the, you know, from Twitter to, um, where else are we? Um, yeah, when you link to the one thing, you can kind of find everything through there. Mm -hmm. Instagram mm -hmm. is yeah, Instagram, Instagram tag mm -hmm. is yeah. Kind of pop and then when you go on Instagram, you find the artists, and you know everything's available there. And the it's tag awesome. again for Instagram is just Pop Gallery. Yes, easy, easy, Pop easy, Gallery. Easily, easily found. Um, and of course, uh, we have a, a, an incredibly, wonderfully, well-trained and enthusiastic group of people here at the Pop Gallery um, who can be called. The, you know, the phone number is 212-533-4262, and uh, either myself or Lily, Lulu, or Sarah, who work here, are easily accessible and available to explain things and invite people and set up appointments, and, you know, we're totally, totally, totally accessible. Really appreciate you both being on the show. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. I also want to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, Strain Print, the Profit Express, and Fortune Up Fine Jewelry. And last but not least, I want to thank you, our listeners, for tuning in. If you want more information on this show or any other show, visit our website at hillarytopperonair.com, or you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and now we're on Amazon Alexa. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.